You minister to folks that can't get out, can't do for themselves. They have to rely on folks to bring them down there. Man, I tell you, and then they they, they crave what you what you say from the word. They crave songs when you talk about Jesus. I tell you, it blesses me. Amen. I tell you, it makes me look at the, the modern day church, Brother Billy, like what is wrong? Come on. I mean, do we got to be shut up in a nursing home? Come on. Hallelujah. Nobody come and see us, praise God, to just seek God more? Yeah. I tell you. But they sat there. I sang that song there last week. And I tell you, tears were rolling down their eyes. Amen. And they were saying, Lord, I'm ready to come home. Yeah. I tell you, they were just so appreciative of Jesus. Come they on. worshiped Him and loved Him. You said, they're just they're old. They're ready to die anyway. No, let me tell you something. As long as they've got life in that body, praise God, they're still precious to God. Come on. Hallelujah. It may not be popular to go sing to a bunch of old folks, but I tell you, I thank God I get to do it. Amen to God. Amen. Hallelujah to God. It's a blessing. Amen to God. Because whatsoever you do unto the least of these, my brethren, Jesus said you have done it unto me. So praise God, if I can take an hour out of my life to go be a blessing to them, I want to do it. Amen, Amen. to God. Hallelujah. And we should all be that way. Amen. Glory to God. I tell you, it is humbling. It makes you just humble and appreciate the things you can do. Amen? Amen. I tell you, praise it makes me glad, amen to God, that Jesus is merciful. Yeah. Praise God. I'm glad, praise God, that He knocked on the door of my heart April 29th, 1993, and I let Him in. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, that didn't get none of you excited, amen, but I'm still excited about it. Amen. amen. God. Hallelujah. we got to learn to praise God more. Amen. We got to shout more. I'll tell you, praise God. Our shouting and, and praising God has become paralyzed anymore. Oh. Hallelujah. It's like somebody is stuck. What is that stuff, honey? What's that stuff they give you to numb you before they do? Uh, Novocaine. Novocaine. That's it. Praise God. I tell you, the devil has injected the body with Novocaine oh. nowadays. They just yeah. become numb. They come in yeah. and they sit down. Hallelujah to God. I'll just be honest. They just sit down on their blessed assurances and want somebody to entertain them. Come on. Hallelujah. We ain't here for entertainment. We're here to proclaim the gospel. Amen. We're here to proclaim Amen. the message of the cross. Yeah. Amen to God. We're here to lift up Jesus Christ. Preach Christ to them crucified. Amen. To take the word of God out to the lost and dying. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. They say you're just a small storefront church. Praise God. I'd rather be in a small storefront church than it. lost into a 6,000 member church. Come on. Amen. That don't know Jesus. That's on their way to hell. They're being deceived by the devil. Amen. Go over to God. I tell you, God needs to move back on the body today. God needs to move upon our hearts. We need to get down and repent and ask God to forgive us. Like I said before, this nation needs to turn back to Jesus, amen, to God, and get right with God and He will bless us. Amen. Hallelujah. But sin has become modern day, just commonplace. Come on. Woo! Amen. I'm going to preach on that tonight. Is that all right? Amen. Go with me if you got your Bibles. Come on. Uh, uh, uh. King James, amen. To 2 Samuel chapter 11. I'm going to preach on something tonight that it ain't popular. Hallelujah. And I'll tell you, I want, I want to tell Brother Billy I appreciate the message he preached a few weeks back ago on sin. Because that was a very, very powerful word. Amen to God. I know anybody else I want to shout about it, but amen, oh. I will. Brother Billy, that was a very powerful word that the Lord gave you. Praise the Lord. And you ministered on. Man, I'll tell you, I appreciate the, the ministry of Brother Billy anyway. I'm not just saying that, praise God. Brother Billy knows how I feel about him, amen, to God. I love him. But I appreciate that message he preached on sin. Because I tell you, if we could have take those CDs and DVDs, Brother Tommy, and send them to a lot of these big churches today and just say, hey, y'all sit there and let's play this. And just listen to this message on sin. I guarantee you they would get mad. Come on. They would get mad. 2 Samuel chapter 11, beginning in verse 1, and this is a very common text of Scripture about David, King David and Bathsheba. Yeah. But there's something in here, praise God, that we all, hallelujah, it's that sin nature, that, amen to God, Jesus came to set us free from. See, we all got it because when Adam and Eve fell short in the garden, Hallelujah to God. It, it, it sin just infected mankind. That's why we needed Jesus to die at the cross, Brother Tyler. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. 
You say, why do you keep saying that and preaching that? Because Jesus is still the remedy for sin. Amen. Amen? Amen. Amen. 2 Samuel chapter 11, beginning of verse 1. And it came to pass after the year was expired at the time when kings would go forth to battle that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel. And they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbath. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. And it came to pass in an evening tide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman, and one said, Is not this Bathsheba the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her, and she came in unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness, and she returned unto her house. And the woman conceived and sent and told David, and said, I am with child. And David sent to Joab, saying, Send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. And when Uriah was come unto David, David demanded of him how Joab did and how the people did and how the war prospered. And David said to Uriah, Go down to thy house, wash thy feet. And Uriah departed out of the king's house, and there followed him a mess of meat from the king. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord and went not down to his house. And when they had told David, saying, Uriah went not down unto his house, David said unto Uriah, Camest thou not from thy journey? Why didst thou, why then didst thou not go down unto thy house? And Uriah said unto David, The ark of Israel and Judah abide in tents, and my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are encamped in the open fields. Shall I then go into my house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife? As thou livest, as thy soul livest, I will not do this thing. Come on. See, Uriah was a very, very noble man. He was man. very obedient to the king. Yeah. Verse 12. And David said to Uriah, Tarry here today also, and tomorrow I will let thee depart. So Uriah abode in Jerusalem that day and tomorrow. And when David had called him, he did eat and drink before him, and he made him drunk. And yet even he went out to lie on his bed with the servants of his Lord, but went not down to his house. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote in the letter saying, Set ye Uriah in the forefront. Now listen now. Set Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle and retire ye from him that he may be smitten and die. And it came to pass when Joab observed the city that he assigned Uriah unto a place where he knew that valiant men were. And the men of the city went out and fought with Joab. And there fell some of the men of the servants of David, and Uriah the Hittite died also. Then Joab sent and told David all the things concerning the war. Amen. And I'm going to stop right there for a moment. Hallelujah. We're going to be in this chapter a bit. But to set up this this story right here, David, the king of Israel, a man that, that God said, a man after God's own heart. Amen. That's a powerful statement right there. Amen. We see David, he stayed back and he got to wandering on the rooftop. Yeah. And he's seen, I, and, and I've, I've heard some say that the way the houses were built back in that day was when you got on the rooftop, it was like each home was like level. And you could like see the next one and so forth like that. It'd be like looking like if you're in a, in a building or something, looking at across the street, whatever. Amen. But he looked and he seen a woman up there taking a bath. And his eyes, amen to God, he just got caught away with the look, with the, the looking, amen to God. See, the devil likes to get our eyes drawn away off on things. That's why he wants us to look upon things and not to look under the cross. Amen. amen. But see, David here, he got in trouble and he had Bathsheba brought to him and he lied with her. And then he sent her back and later on they found out she was with child. Come on. And her husband was Uriah. Y'all know the story. Praise yeah. God. I'm just setting up a, a, an outline here. So what David did to cover his own tracks, he knew that she was with child so he was going to have to put Uriah, which was a, a very noble man, a man that was obedient to what the king said. So we've got to put him on the front line, Tyler. And we've got to put him out there and then we're going to pull 
the other men back so he would get killed. David had this plotted out in his mind. And he was a man after God's own heart. Yeah. You say, how can a man after God's own heart plot this out? A man after God's own heart. Do this thing. Commit adultery with Uriah's wife. And then have him killed. David had the power because he was king. Amen. And a lot of people, they, they've preached on David and you know they said, if I was David, I wouldn't have done this. You don't know what you will do when you get drawn away by the lust of the flesh. Amen. That's why you need to stay close to Jesus. That's why you need to stay in the Word. You need to pray, amen, to God. And we need to pray now more than ever, church. Amen. amen. Today, we don't need to stop praying. We need to pray more, harder than we've ever prayed before. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. So I want to talk to you tonight on a topic. I was thinking today as I was reading this, and I got to thinking, you know, I think about things that are easy to do. How many of you just got something you can name off the top of your head that's just easy to do to you? Come on. But better what, what's something easy to do? Eat. Eat. <laughs> that is good. Tyler, what's something easy to do? Making a sandwich. Making a sandwich. Sister Tanya, what's something easy to do? My phone is not happy. Okay, praise God. Your phone's more with something easy to do. Dance. Dance, amen to God. Just something easy to do, you know, that we can do. Something easy for me to do is talk. Amen. <laughs> Come on. Now I wish somebody could get all excited, amen to God, when I start talking about Jesus, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Something easy for me to do, Brother Ron, is talk. Yeah. And I thought, praise to God, I said, well... You know, something else that's easy to do when you walk away from Jesus, and that's sin. That's yeah. the truth. Amen. Amen. Can I say that's that again? Say something again. else that's easy to do when you walk away from Jesus and quit reading the Word, quit praying, quit getting around the saint, the men and the brothers and sisters of the Lord is get drawn away in sin. Amen. And that's real easy to do. And the devil, amen, to God knows that because of that sin nature. Come on. You say, what's that sin nature? Well, that's what we were given, hallelujah, because of what Adam and Eve did. And but Jesus died, so amen to God, that thing could be done away with. Amen? Come on. So that, that's the title of my message tonight. Things that are easy to do. You say, that's, that's corny, Brother Mike. Well, it makes sense if you think about it. Because like everybody just said, the things that was easy to do for some of us, I'll use the example talking, if you get away from Jesus, sinning is easy to do. Amen. Father, we come before You now in the wonderful name of Jesus. That blessed holy name that was given to us. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. The name that we've got victory over. The name that's over us. Hallelujah. Our God. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray, Lord, You would minister to those under the sound of my voice here at Voice of the Lord tonight. To those out there, dear Lord, by way of Facebook and YouTube and the VOTO channel and the Preaching the Truth broadcast and all other avenues, Lord God, we ask You to just minister. You said Your Word would not return void. I pray, Lord God, You would hide me behind the cross. Let me decrease as You increase. And we ask You to cover this service with the blood. In Jesus' precious name. And everybody say it with me. Amen. 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 I'm still kind of excited with Brother Billy and all y'all got excited when I said the favorite thing I do is talk. Come on. Man, I got I got more of a reaction out of that than I did singing about it's all in the name. Amen. Lord Jesus. Brother Billy, I don't know what to think about that. Praise the Lord. <laughs>